Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to share with you about some data import Python program, which I recently used. In fact, this is not very difficult thing uh, for most of the people to import and do some kind of manipulation on the data and then try to plot it. But since I struggled uh, for this thing, so I thought maybe it might be useful for some of you. So let's get started. So, okay. So first of all, I would like to show you that um, I'm going to import two different kinds of data files, txt and um, .txt and .csv format. So basically my files are saved in this folder. This is the data files folder in my desktop. And now you can see here, I have named three different files, data one, data two, and data three. Okay. And um, so as you can see, this data one is a text file. I just keep my cursor there. Then you can see it shows text file. And I can just open it also for you. So what you can see here is like, there are two columns in this uh, text file. One is time, another is temperature, some temperature recording. This file was created with one of the uh, finite element simulation console. This is not important how it was created, but basically there are like two different columns. One is time and one is temperature, and we would like to import this in uh, in Python, and uh, we'll try to plot it. And the other data file is like this data two file. Which you can open again. Then you can see this is a CSV file. There are three different columns here. So what we'll do is we'll try to also import and try to plot it. And then this data three is also a CSV file. So there are two columns, time and voltage. And if I remember correctly, this is a direct data from an oscilloscope, uh, which is measuring some voltage of a photodiode. This could also be very handy because this is a typical format of the data which you get from an um, oscilloscope kind of um, device. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, if you haven't installed yet Python in your laptop, then you can see my previous video, the link for which I have uh, copied below uh, uh, the comment section. So for now, uh, we go directly uh, to Anaconda prompt, which I showed how to install your Windows machine. So I will just click on this. So now the prompt window is there. So what is next? So next thing is just to open a Python Jupyter note notebook. So what I will do is I will just type notebook and I press and then you can see if your installation worked nicely, then you will be directed in this web browser. And then um, here is your Jupyter Notebook kernel. And from this, you can select whichever folder your programs uh, for Python are saved. Uh, for me, I have uh, some programs in my download folder. So I will just go there, click, and then you can see these dot ipynb files which are for this ipython jupyter notebook and for today's video i'm going to open this program import example program in ipython i'll just click on this and then you can see the next browser this notebook is now loaded perfect so now we can go uh, like uh, part by part into different subsections and see what we are doing. So let's start with the top section, the first section. So here I'm importing some of the library files which are useful for this specific um, example or this specific video. So for example, here I have imported NumPy uh, library, uh, which is used for um, uh, working with arrays and also uh, using linear algebra functions etc uh, and then similarly for importing image i have this uh, ipython.display 
then I have uh, sci scipy dot optimize. This is for minimizing or maximizing uh, some reference function, or uh, this is used for basically uh, doing some uh, curve fitting because you can uh, maximize and minimize your errors, etc., uh, with respect to a given function. And then you have the standard mat plot library, which is, uh, is the standard library used for plotting uh, your data, etc. Okay, then once you have typed all these commands in your Python notebook, then let's move forward. So, okay, so after these library functions, we go to the next uh, subsection. So here you can see directly I have this line for loading the text file, which I showed you earlier. And this is uh, saved in a given folder. The folder name is given here. This is like user, this thing, OneDrive, desktop, data files, data1.txt. I can show you again. So my data file was here. This is desktop and then data files. And this is the data one, which I'm talking about. If you just right click and check the properties so you can see the location of this file, like C users, uh, one day, one drive, desktop, then data files. And that's what I have done here. You can see. So I have this C users, uh, one drive, desktop, data files, data one.txt. So this file I am importing. So this very simple command, just np.load.txt and then the location of your uh, data file and then what type of data is inside. So I have float and then I want to skip first five rows because there it's only some comments. So I don't want to import them. That's all. So uh, what I can do is I can start running then the first section. So basically you go and click in this section and you press shift and end. And now you can see here this black thing is indicating pause running, now it's over. And I come to this section again shift and enter so it seems it was quite fast just to see whether it's loaded correctly or not uh, i can just try try to see what exactly is the size of uh, array x1 so i have loaded the two columns of my data into x1 and y1 now i will try to see the uh, size of x1 so with this command shift enter so there are like 41 entries it would be the same for Y1, so no need to check this one. Fine. Okay, and now once the data is loaded in X1 and Y1, you can do anything with this. What I'm doing here is just for an example, I am plotting it. For plotting, again, I just give a name to my figure, figure.exponential, and this PLT is the mod, uh, is the mat plot library function, uh, which I had defined earlier. You can see here, see here, matplotlib.pythonplotsplt. So that's why I'm calling my figure in this fashion. Okay, so and then next immediate thing is plotting x1 and y1. I give label data. x axis I'm calling time minutes and y axis I'm calling temperature. So if I just do shift and enter again, you, you see the plot. Nice. So this is the exponential. Uh, exponentially rising function of temperature with respect to time. Okay, so that's how you import and plot your data in Python. If you want to fit some exponential rising function to this uh, data, then maybe you can go through this also. If you are not interested, you can just skip this. So here what I'm doing is I'm defining an exponentially rising function with amplitude m and the functional form is one minus exponential x, which is like the time dependent variable for, for our data, which I showed previously, plus some offset for the function. So this is the functional form. So I just run this also, uh, this definition shift and enter. And now I go to the next section. So here, what I'm doing is I'm giving some initial guess for these parameters, m, uh, tau and b. So for example, m is one, tau is 293, uh, sorry, um, yeah, exactly. And b is 2.5. Uh, or yeah, other way around, you can see here. So, and then um, 
you can use this uh, scipython.optimize.curvefit for finding the best uh, curve fit to your function and then once you have these values for parameters you can plot it and you can see the functional form of your actual fitted uh, function also so i just shift and enter again okay so it's there very fast now what you can see here is the value of m here is this 0.988 value of tau is 63.16 and the value of b offset is 293 so these were the three parameters m tau and b and now you can see the fitted function uh, which is in uh, this yellow color it's nicely fitting over the data data points okay so this part is finished then then we can try to import the next data file I will show you again. So my another data file, which is inside desktop data files was like CSV file data two and data three are CSV files. So again, for doing CSV file import, I first again import this function, which is shown here, shift enter. Okay. This is also coming from NumPy uh, library. And then simply what you can do is you can use this function and give your file name my case this is data2.csv i want to remove these um, uh, delete delimiters and then just shift and enter so now the data is stored inside this array data named data <laughs> now you can check what is the size of this matrix or array so you shift and enter again you can see so i have three columns and there are like thousand rows and then in next section, I just plot this. So basically for plotting, maybe it, it's not necessary, but, but just to give an example, I, what I'm doing is I'm separating three different columns in data into three separate arrays. So that's why I have defined this variable J999. And I define three empty arrays, X, Y1 and Y2. Uh, they have same uh, size in terms of uh, rows uh, thousand because it runs from zero to nine 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 and okay then using this for, for, uh, for loop from i uh, equal to zero to this index nine 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 i store data inside x y1 and y2 that's how you do this so shift and enter so done so now you have three separate uh, arrays x y1 and y2 for uh, this data so now what you can do is you can simply plot this just to see how it looks like uh, again this is very specific for this example you can choose whatever way you want so again in this case i give plot one uh, as a name for my plot figure and then i give the maximum and minimum value along x and y axis and also i set some limits on x axis and y axis values if you are not interested in this you can again skip this and then you can see i am doing these plots so plot x versus y1 again plot x versus y2 because they were two different columns and uh, i want to plot them in log scale again if you don't want you can just skip this and then finally we can see the outcome so shift and enter so it's running yeah now it's over so now you can see the three columns which i showed you in my data uh, were like this x-axis which was frequency and these two y-axis plots which you see in orange and uh, blue color so this part is also over uh, again, since I have one more data file, I can show you this example also. It's basically more or less the same. I just changed the name of the file data.osc in oscilloscope and use the same command uh, which I used for previous CSV file. So basically, shift enter, data is loaded. If you run this, so it's like 3002 rows and two columns. Again, I can run this index J from 0 to 3001 and import 
the two columns uh, sorry one yeah that's correct two columns x2 and y2 separately as i did before this is not important this is not very useful so i just do this and then i plot again so now you see this data file is also plotted here so okay so this is a short video just to show very simple um, uh, tricks for importing files and doing some manipulation out of them and i made this video because i had to struggle a bit in the beginning so i thought maybe this information would be useful for you thank you very much for watching bye